In so many ways, I was so lucky. I mean, just the fact that I got diagnosed as swiftly as I did, that I got diagnosed at all, really. And the fact that I had full health insurance, the fact that it didn't level me financially. I mean, I'm lucky on so many ways. And then my mission has been to level the playing field. And so often we hear about these major breakthroughs in medicine, but I think really they stick, and was the case with my, my story, when you kind of give it the identity of kind of a person, right? You put a person behind uh, a breakthrough. I think that my story really kind of kind of shows that in a lot of ways. I think that people who listen to my story, and actually I do from listening to other people tell me about my story, is that it's so important for a doctor to take a detailed health history and, and kind of personal history from a patient. And it's so important for a doctor to really listen to the patients. You know, I think there is sometimes, especially when a patient is difficult, and, understand it, and understandably, to a certain extent, there is a kind of want, uh, a wanting to dismiss them in a way or dismiss their family. And I, I'm a, per, a perfect case of really listening helped me get that diagnosis. Now, when I was in the hospital and I had received the diagnosis, a uh, team of young medical students and uh, I guess a physician came by and they were explaining the disease to the group in my room. And my dad was sitting there next to me. And at one point, they said, just as an aside, she might have to have her ovaries removed. And this was the first time my father or I had ever heard this, because basically there's, in some cases with this disease, there's a uh, teratoma in the ovaries. And in some cases, they have removed ovaries in the past. So all of a sudden, we're hearing this as an aside from a room, you know, a room full of you know, young-faced you know, medical students, and my dad was so angry. It was the way in which it was delivered as if we weren't even there. So that, to me, I know it's a very specific example, but just to be aware that a reminder that we're, you know, it's a human being going through a very traumatic, horrific experience, and you know, the the, the more sensitive, overly sensitive you can be in some respects, in some in instances, is, is probably the better way to handle something. I, I went to my editor, and you know, she went to my editor, and he said she should write about it. I, came, I went to him, and he said, "Okay, um, we'd love for you to write about it. It's Tuesday. It's due Friday." So I did my best and it came out as my mysterious lost month of madness. The response from this piece was deafening. I mean, I got hundreds of, and maybe even thousands of emails from people who perhaps suspected that their daughter had the disease, that their son had it, that they themselves had it. And I realized then that I needed to do more. I needed to write a book. I needed to, to get this out in an even bigger way. And I hope that people speak up who've had experiences you know within the medical field and kind of push for greater funding of diseases especially rare diseases I hope people are you know use their voices to show how important that is and a part of my life I now um, advocate for two nonprofits one is the encephalitis society which is a UK based kind of broad encephalitis umbrella and then the autoimmune encephalitis alliance is a US based um, nonprofit and they're really about connecting doctors and patients and we have this so is much map. more to learn and we have so much more to gain by learning and um, I can't help but, but be optimistic, I, I really, especially given to what, what happened to me. My name is Susanna Kahalen. I'm the author of Brain on Fire.